Okay, so, um, so what I did yesterday was to interpret um, Riemann theorem, Riemann Arch theorem, as saying that you have a some sort of identification, which is actually precise, between this space, this representation variety, and the space of holomorphic section, holomorphic form on S. But to identify these two objects, I use a third object, which is so the space of pairs F rho, where rho is a representation of pi 1 of S in R, and F is harmonic and rho equivariant. I actually forgot something, actually made a mistake in a, I, I forgot something. And here, this means that F is only up to an additive constant. I only care that my F is well defined up to some additive constant, right? So then I define some maps which were essentially forgetting some structures, which are here and here. And then I prove the theorem by proving first the existence of such a map. And this one was more or less easy. And this one was a little harder. Okay? So now I will try to do the same thing today for a chi of S, S1, which is a space of homomorphism of the form of the group into S1. And uh, for that, I need to introduce some important objects, which are holomorphic bundles. So a holomorphic bundle, this is just a holomorphic bundle in the category of complex algebraic geometry, which means that the, it's like a, it's a vector bundle. So it's a complex vector bundle with holomorphic change of coordinates. So that just means that you can define what are holomorphic sections. So in particular, one can define holomorphic sections. Sections, and why is it so? So. Um, So my, let's denote my bundle E over M. So why is it so? It's just because E, because of this condition, becomes a complex manifold itself. So indeed, E, the total space, becomes a complex manifold itself. Meaning that it has charts with value in Cn, with change of coordinates in which are holomorphic. So this means you can just define holomorphic sections just as sections from um, uh, sections of the bundle which turns out to be holomorphic. So the other thing that you can define is so whenever you have a vector bundle, I hope you are familiar with that, which are forms with value in a bundle. So for a general vector bundle, one can define forms with value in the bundle. So what does this mean? So imagine you have E over M. So this is just now differential geometry. 
So the space omega p of forms on M with value in E is the space of omega uh, such that for every point x, omega at x is uh, a p form on the tangent bundle at x of m with value in E. It just means that what, what, what omega does, so omega at the point x, so it takes, so these are vectors in Tx of m. And when you feed your form with vectors in Tx of m, what do you obtain? You just, or just obtain the vector of E. The force you require is to be anti-symmetric on everything. Okay. So let's say a connection nabla uh, so there is a discrepancy between French and English about the connection. I think that's the correct one in English, right? Nob nabla is compatible on E and a holomorphic bundle is compatible I'm sorry, this is not what I wanted to is compatible with the holomorphic structure holomorphic structure If, if what? Thank you. If sigma section is holomorphic, this is just equivalent to the fact that as a as a, is differential, thanks to the connection, is, is a complex. So it means that nabla jx of sigma is equal to i nabla x of sigma. Okay, so that's a complex structure on the manifold, and that's a complex structure on the fiber. So then it is natural, so let's introduce delta, del bar nabla, which is the a uh, map which is associated to a section, something which is actually a, an element, uh, uh, so nabla, uh, del bar nabla of sigma, which is going to be a one, uh, a zero one form on uh, M with value in E. Of course, I forgot to say that, as before, you have decomposition of the form into types. So what is this object? So to sigma, so what is del bar nabla of sigma? So del bar nabla of sigma of x, this is equal to nabla j x of sigma minus, this is of score for all x, Uh, of sigma. This is equal to the difference of that minus a nabla x of sigma. And we can rephrase this stuff as sigma uh, is holomorphic. This is equivalent to say that del bar nabla of sigma is equal to zero. So let's say, let's make some remark. 
important remarks that you should do as an exercise. So this Del Barnabla makes sense for any connection, right? So first thing that Del Barnabla 1 minus Del Barnabla 2 is equal to Del Barnabla 2, is this is equivalent to the fact that the difference A, which is Nabla 1 minus Nabla 2, so you know that the difference between two connections is a one form with value, so this is a one form with value in the M with the value in the endomorphism of E. So how is it defined? So let's see what, what does it mean precisely. So if I take A of X applied to U, this is this belongs to EX. So this is what? This is Nabla 1. I, yeah, I, sh I should know, I should have known since about uh, 30 years that you never put subscripts for connections. U. So you take, a, you extend U as a section and you make the difference of this object. And this object is, of course, a vector in EX. So this means that A of X itself, you can see it as a something which takes a vector in, in M, which takes also a vector in the fiber and obtain a vector in the fiber. So that's exactly what are these kind of objects are. So it's a one form, but now uh, this is a one form of a certain type, so you should make the exercise, so I, I did it. And it's a form of type one, zero. Again, that's just essentially linear algebra. There's nothing really to be, to be, to be clever about that, right? And a second remark is that there always exist compactible connection. Why is it so? Because, as usual, they exist in trivialization and then you can patch them up by partition of unity. Partition of unity. So that's an important remark. And then we can define, using that, the operator. So if he is, if E is an holomorphic bundle, the del bar operator of E. So this is just by definition the del bar of Nabla for some compatible connection. Right? So the story is not yet over, and now there is actually a theorem, which is actually, so now if, I, if I'm given a connection, this defines a del bar operator, does this come from the uh, holomorphic structure? The answer is yes. So it's actually a theorem, because it requires more work than what, what I've been doing so far. So if Nabla is a connection on 
uh, E a complex bundle, a complex vector bundle over a complex manifold M. So then there exists a unique structure of holomorphic bundle. Complex vector bundle E. On E, so that del bar is equal to del bar nabla. So I mean that this del bar operator carries all the structure. It can be given just by a uh, something which satisfies, uh, for instance, by a connection. So, but you could also define it uh, by axioms, like you do for for connections. But I. So how do you prove that? So what is the idea? I'm just going to give the idea of the proof, right? So you want to define local holomorphic trivialization. So this means that take take a base, take a base basis E one E K of the fiber at some point. You want to find a local trivialization that you want to call holomorphic. So the trick is to prove that, and that's actually the, the hard part, prove that exists. Sigma i defined, defined, defined locally so that sigma i of x is equal to e i and del bar nabla sigma i is equal to zero. So I want to extend my vectors to holomorphic sections. So if I have, a, if I can do that just for one vector. This means that I can do that for a base, and then I have a local trivialization. Okay? So, it turns out that here you end up with a problem in PDE. So, you have a linear operator, which is this nebla bar, and you would want to extend it in some ways. And if you think a little, not very hard, you will understand that it is exactly a something very similar to the existence of isothermal coordinate. So it's analogous to... So it's not trivial. And to be fairly honest, uh, the proof I can imagine is not easy. Analogous to the existence of isothermal coordinates. Okay, so that's uh, so. So now we have a pretty good picture of what is a holomorphic bundle. So we can associate it to connection, the same thing as a del bar operator, and, uh, and that's the uh, that's the idea. So there's some case. So you, you, there's lots of compatible connection, right? So for instance, on a manifold, you know there is a, if you have a metric on a manifold, you know there is only one nice connection. Which is a, I mean, is a very nice connection, which is a Levi Civita connection, which has a property to be torsion free. So here in this context, we're also in the context of, uh, of, um, of complex uh, uh, holomorphic vector bundle. We also have an analogous connection, which is a so called churn connection. So, um, so assume G is a 
uh, well, okay, let's say the theorem right now. So I'm going to state it in, 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 uh, in, uh, in full generality. So theorem. So let E be a holomorphic vector bundle equipped with a Hermitian metric So what is a Hermitian metric? It's just a metric which is Hermitian in every fiber, and of course smooth, right? But I don't require anything like, I mean, you can't have a metric to be holomorphic because it's a real object. So then there exists, exists a unique connection Nabla with the following property. So first, you want Nabla to be compatible with G, that is Nabla G is equal to zero. Right? So if you take if you take a product of vectors and uh, you push this vector parallelly, then the product remains constant along the parallel transport. Second thing, del bar Nabla. So the del bar operator associated to Nabla is exactly del bar of E. So it means that's just compatible. And finally, so it's something that only makes sense in higher dimension, which is uh, the curvature of Nabla. So what does the curvature of Nabla does? It takes two vectors on the base, one vector in the fiber, and it produces a, a vector in the fiber. So it is a two-form with value in endomorphism, but you, we want this two-form to be uh, specific, which we to be a form of type 1-1 one, one with value in the endomorphism of E. And um, uh, I should also say that the uh, uh, complex structure itself is is, 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 uh, is zero. Is uh, the, the the complex structure? This is a complex uh, connection. It means that the, the complex structure is parallel, right? So have I, have I forgot anything? Uh, the condition three is empty. It's not a restriction. Why is it so? Because we're talking a two form with value something, but you already said a two zero form and a zero two form are zero. So just the one one form that counts. So this one is, is, is guaranteed without you having to do anything. Uniqueness for uh, M, the complex dimension of M, well, uh, just prove uniqueness We're on, on, on M uh, curve. So imagine you have two connections, so Nabla 0 minus Nabla 1, and the difference is something which is A, which is a one form, which is with value in the... Uh, what did I say? One zero form on uh, M with value in P, right? So that's the condition number two. Now I want to say that, furthermore, for every X, AX is. Uh, Anti adjoint, how do you say? Um, anti symmetric in the world of complex emission, how do you say that? Anti emission. 
skew emission. So this means that that's that's at the condition one. This means that AX U against V, this is equal to minus U A X of V. Okay, so that's my second definition. That's my second condi my first condition. So now you play some magic trick, which is to say, so I'm sorry, I have to look my notes because I of course do not have no idea. It's a sequence of four equalities. So you take AJX U against V, right? And you want to compute that. And of course, you want to prove that it is equal to the, its opposite. So this is equal to minus U AJX of V. So I'm using one. And now this is equal to what? To, then I'm using two. Uh, two tells me that I can, I can pull out the J here. And uh, then because it is Hermitian, this is equal to I U A X of V. Right? I'm using the fact that this is a Hermitian uh, metric. And of course, this is the same thing now as minus I U A of X U against V, so this is equal to three. And then this is equal to, I, I, there is no three, right? So there's no such thing as three, it's cyclic, three is one. And then I use two again, and this is going to be equal to minus A J X U, V, and tada, this is zero, right? The number is equal to its opposite, so this is equal to zero. So that would be two, I guess. So holomorphic line bundles over S. Okay, so let's just introduce a. Um, so I don't know how familiar you are with characteristic classes. So let's say so. It's let L over S be a holomorphic line bundle. So we say that L has degree zero if uh, L is topologically trivial. Of course, this is not the correct definition, but let's let's uh, let's uh, let's take that for granted. Okay, so now we can uh, express our third. Uh, so maybe, okay, I'll do it here. Um, does everybody see this board? It okay, so I'm going to have another of my triangular thing. So, which is here, I consider L to be uh, the, the space of a holomorphic line bundle. Line bundle of degree zero. So this has a name, which is, is called the, I mean, it's related to Picard group, but I don't want to, to do here. So now I want to consider the triple, which is L. So that's just a, a complex line bundle. I don't require it to be holomorphic. I have G, which is a uh, Hermitian metric. And here I have a uh, Nabla, which is a flat connection. So 
such that nabla g is zero. And here I have my favorite object, which is the space of representation of S into S1. So there are some obvious map, which is this one. So I forgot, I forgot about, I forget about, uh, uh, forget, what do I forget about? Uh, I just say that I have this flat connection, so this flat connection, so that's just a monodromy of Nabla. Right, so actually this complex line bundle is a trivial line bundle in this context, right? So that's an easy map. The other easy map here is I associate to this data, I associate the map which is L with the del bar of Nabla. So that's holomorphic line bundle now. So now I have a, again, easy map now, which is this one. That's easy. So why is it easy? I start with a representation. I consider, so what is this map? So what's this green map? So this green map is uh, the map which associates to a representation of a pi 1 of s into s1 c as the isometry group of c. So you associate to rho, you associate uh, the bundle, which is uh, the associated bundle, L rho, which is, as usual, uh, E uh, C cross S divided by pi 1 of S. And this comes with a flat connection. Okay? So, so this map is easy. It has a fancy name, I think. And now the map which is difficult is this one. And in the end, we'll obtain a identification. So the resulting theorem, which is the equivalence between these two objects, this is known as Abel theorem. And it has a totally different proof than what I'm going to give, to give a beautiful proof, which for instance works in any characteristic or over any field or whatnot. But uh, I'm just uh, going to, uh, to, uh, to, to give the proof. So let's give the proof of, so, let's, so we need, what do we need to prove is the following. the following theorem. So, oh, I forgot to uh, write, given the theorem. Given a holomorphic line bundle. L, there exists a unique Hermitian metric G on L. Um, sorry, I have, I have a... Ah, okay. So that it's churn connection. So I guess I forgot to say what is the churn connection. Is flat. So again, the churn connection is a connection which is provided Provided by Chern theorem. Wait, 
Okay. So I'm going to give a proof for that, which uh, is not exactly the one that generalizes, because the one that generalizes would be very complicated to explain. Right. So you start with as usual, so let G0 be a mission metric. on L uh, was Chern's connection connection is nabla zero. Okay, so you start with a remission metric and you want to find a remission metric for which this connection is flat. Right? So, so, so now you just consider G1, any metric, so it's just a multiple of, uh, of the metric here, just E, F, G naught. That's exponential. That's exponential, and F is a function, smooth function on, on S. Right. So, a, so now you write nabla 1 is equal to uh, nabla 0 plus omega. And you want to, to get your grip on omega and uh, a little exercise show that what is omega is just obtained by computing nabla 1 of g0. So nabla 1 of g0, this is just equal to minus 2 omega times g0. Okay, so the difference omega is obtained by this, by just taking that. On the other hand, thanks to that, so thanks to that, so thanks you, so using star, so you actually can obtain omega in terms of f. You have that omega is equal to the one zero part of f. So you want to understand what is the difference between the two connections. So knowing just this quantity, how do you express this in terms of f? You should because everything is explicit. So you do this by taking this derivative and identifying this with that, and you get exactly this condition. Right? So I'm, of course, a little fast, but this is some, some stuff that you can uh, do by yourself. So what do you want to do now? You want to have this object to be flat, so you want so your goal is to find omega so that, or f, which is the same thing, so that uh, nabla 0 plus omega is flat. Plus the f, the one zero part of f, is flat. But this is equivalent, this condition is equivalent to, it is equivalent to, so you know how to compute the curvature of something when you just add something. So it's just equivalent to the fact that the differential of the f of the one zero part of f is equal to the curvature omega zero, and that's the curvature of, of uh, nabla zero. Okay? So I've been very careful in not defining what is omega zero, just to avoid the dreary signs that should be in this equation. So, so let's choose an auxiliary hyperbolic metric on S. So let us choose an auxiliary hyperbolic metric on S with volume form uh, let's call it uh, sigma zero if you don't 
Okay. So then, what is the of the f of the one zero part? This is again identifies. It's again exercise of the Laplacian of f times sigma zero. So now. And on the other hand, you have omega zero is equal to, uh, this is just a number here, this is equal to k times sigma zero, right? So you want to solve, so the goal is to solve, is to solve the equation nabla f is equal to k. And we know there is only one restriction here to solving this equation. There is only one, ex so you can solve this equation. This equation. So up to a constant. If only if. The integral of k the sigma zero on h on s is equal to zero, and that's exactly the degree zero condition. But so the theory of characteristic classes classes theory tell you that the integral of k the sigma zero is equal to zero. This is equivalent to the fact that the degree of L is zero. Right, so everything is purely explicit here. So you, at some point, you have to solve this equation. And, uh, and uh, you can solve it in many ways, for instance, starting with a heat equation or something. So again, you realize that I've, I've done something wrong again. I forgot some equivalence here. So this is. This is my emission metric. You see that as f is defined up to a cons an additive constant, my emission metric is, of course, well defined just up to a multiplicative constant. Twenty-five minutes less. Amazing. So now I want to uh, generalize this picture in a higher rank, not to holomorphic bundles, but to any bundles, and to explain uh, uh, what is a Higgs bundle and what are the main theorem here. So is this so far clear? Of course, I do not explain how to solve this equation, but um, you well, you know that you can solve. Uh, well, I think you essentially you know that, right? So I explained in the last minutes of the last talk that you can put together the uh, the uh, the if you take the representation of S one into C star, and what is C star? It's actually G L G L one of C. As a, the same thing as if you put the two things together, and here you would obtain the space of pairs where L is a holomorphic line bundle. And here it's a, a Higgs field, phi. So, what is phi in this context? Phi is a holomorphic form with value in the bundle of endomorphism of L. And the identification is just because this is a trivial bundle for any holomorphic bundle, line bundle that you get. And this is therefore the same thing as really as H10 of S. And I have this identification between holomorphic line bundles equipped with this object, which I want to call a Higgs field on this object, okay? And a little comment that phi is equal to zero corresponds to 
uh, representation to chi of S1, this is not S1, of course, S into S1, where S1 is the maximal compact, compact of C star. And there is a case where uh, now uh, L is the trivial bundle. And this corresponds to, to, uh, to a representation of S into R. And we see that R is going to be, in somehow, the split form. You are not going to see anything here. So, so what is R? This is the split form of C star. Okay. So C, C star, GL1 of C, is a complexification of two groups. One is S1. So this complexification corresponds to the Higgs bundle being zero, but also the complexification of R. And this complexification corresponds to one part of the, of the stuff, which is the trivial bundle here. So we're going to see in our generalization, that again, you will have a general theorem, which is a Hitchin theorem, or Hitchin, so, I mean, the, the stuff which comes from the Higgs bundle theory, Hitchin Colette Simpson uh, uh, theory. So you will have, on one end, holomorphic Higgs bundles, and then representation into G and into SL and C, to make my life simpler. So when the Higgs field is zero, is going to coincide to correspond to representation with value in the compact, maximal compact, and that's a famous Narasim and Seshadri theorem, which I'm to, going to explain very soon. And when you fix the bundle, you will obtain precisely the definition of Hitchin representation, which corresponds to fixing a real form of your group, which is maximally non-compact, and that would be SLNR, and that corresponds to what are called split groups. So let's try to explain that, at least state what is a theorem. So, right. So in that context, you could do it, but I want to do it in a more general thing. Because, uh, you know, I mean, this is really as a motivation. So if you start doing a uh, So, uh, so there is going to be lots of, um, uh, so it's a beautiful generalization, but you have to pay some price, of course. Not everything is simple. So let G be equal to S, L, and C. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. So that you, you will see that so you, you're not so far right. So, so already I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not a generalization because I'm not considered G, L, and C which would be GL1, but I want to simplify the story, right? So a Higgs field, so let E be a rank N Hermitian, uh, rank N holomorphic bundle. So I'm sticking to my idea of not defining truly what is a degree. So we say, say, say E as degree zero. Degree zero if the exterior product the space of a form. So that's going to be a line bundle. The determinant of E is trivial, is topologically trivial. Of course, I'm just saying that the, the so in general, right? So um, yeah, I'm going to run into problem now. Uh, right. So now Higgs field on uh, Higgs field on E is an element, a holomorphic an element, 
uh, an element of H10 of S with value in the endomorphism of E. So it's an holomorphic one form on S with value in E. Right? Uh, Okay, so Higgs bundle, so the pair E phi is a Higgs bundle. That's what the Higgs bundle is. So uh, I'm going to have my triangle again. So I have the space of Higgs fields, the so pair E phi. And here, I have my space of representation of S with value in S, L, and C. Okay. And here, I have my object. So I have to define lots of things. So it's a triple where you have E, uh, Nabla, and G. So what are all these objects? This is a complex rank n bundle. So I forgot about the holomorphic structure here. This is a flat connection. Right? And this is a harmonic metric on E. So I have to explain, of course, what is a harmonic metric. So uh, now I have natural maps. So this map is a map which is associated to Nabla, which associates Rho, right? Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to call this one D. Right? Flat connection should be D this way, if you don't mind. And that's just a monodromy of D. And then I want to explain there is a natural map from here to here. So what is going to be the holomorphic bundle? So it's E with a certain Delbar operator. So it's going to be the holomorphic bundle. E is what? Uh, you take the Delbar operator. Not the one which is associated to the flat connection, but the one which is associated to the churn connection of NAB of G. So here, this is, so watch out, this is a churn connection um, uh, no, I have to explain. No, no, no. At this stage, I am sorry, 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 sorry. Up, 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 up. So I have to explain what is this nabla, right? And here I have also to explain what is this phi. And I have to explain what is this harmonic metric, right? Okay. So even to prove the obvious maps, I need to define what is a harmonic metric, and what is this nabla, and what is this, this phi. So this nabla will be a Hermitian connection. It's not going to be the flat connection. Right. So how does this work? So what is a harmonic metric? So 
So I lift that everything to the uh, so so on X, which is a universal cover of S. So you have E trivializes as X cross F, and that's something like Cn, right? A vector space, just a vector space. So that's using the flat connection D, right? So now, a, what is a metric? A metric is at each point, a point in the space of a metric. Okay? So in this case, when you lift everything, a section, it's just going to be a map. So a metric is a row equivalent map. Map from E to to what? To the space of matrix on F, and of course this is not E, this is X, and this is a nice Riemannian manifold. So I'm not going to make some restriction of my matrix, I'm going to consider only the matrix with a fixed determinant. So something I should have said before, so E comes with an invariant volume from a parallel par, uh, nabla d parallel volume form. And where does this come from? This is just because my representation is value in S and C, in S, L and C, right? So I have, a I, have a, I have to understand maps X to this manifold, which I want to call M, which is a space of uh, metrics on F. And we all know that it is identified with a symmetric space SL of F divided by SU of F. Right? And this is a negatively curved what? Oh my god. Thank you. Non positively curved. Thanks. Right. So what is a harmonic metric now? So when I have a such an object, I can define as before the energy of psi, so e psi, this is going to be the integral over delta. This is a fundamental domain. for pi 1 of s, of 1 half of 1 half of the norm of psi square d sigma 0, and this is again this uh, uh, hyperbolic metric which I choose. So what is a, and of course I'm, I, I, I take the tangent space of the tangent map of psi, so that's an endomorphism between linear space equipped with metric, so I can take its norm, and I can evaluate of that. So the definition of a harmonic map is to be a... So that really looks like what we did before. So a harmonic... A metric is harmonic... if... Uh, psi is a critical point of uh, is a critical point of uh, the energy. So remember that I could say before that the harmonic function is a function is harmonic if it is 
the real part of a holomorphic function. So you can play the same game here. There is not, not going to be real uh, holomorphic maps of psi into something, so I have to change this idea. So, so what I'm going to do? Uh, so the differential, what, what sort of object is that? The tangent map to psi. So this is a section of the bundle. So this is a belong to. So that just, I'm just talking about what is the differential map. So you like the differential of a function to be one form. So what's the differential of the map as a one form? It's a one form. You can see it as a one form on x with value in what? Because every time you take a vector, you have its image, which lies in the tangent space. So imagine I have psi, which goes from x to n in general. So t psi, t psi maps the tangent space of x to the tangent space of n. So it takes a vector in x and produces a vector in here. But of course, this is not a bundle on x itself. So what it is, you can think of it as a one form with value in the pullback of the tangent space on n. So I've mapped my map psi, so I can pull back the vector bundle to uh, n, and uh, my t psi belong to such object, right? What? Uh, M, no, no, okay, this is called M, right? So I'm confused with last week when M was the, bond, the base of something. Right. So now I'm going to make something like uh, essentially stupid. So before I had a function, a differential was a one form with value in R. So I want to think of this as a function with value in C. So I just do that. So what I do, I just complexify this bundle. So this, of course, is a, a subset of the one form of x with value in the complexified bundle of the pullback bundle. Okay, so my bundle, the t star of m, a priori is not a holomorphic bundle. It's not a complex bundle, but I can turn it into a, a uh, complex bundle, right? So now observe. So in particular, because here I have a complex manifold and here I have a complex bundle, I can consider the one zero form of that. In particular, uh, one can take phi to be equal to by definition, that's the definition of phi, so far it's not a X field, which is the one zero part of this, of this psi. That's my definition, just take the one zero part of that. So I want to continue my description now. So this object is not only a vector bundle, but it comes with a natural connection. So, but uh, psi star of TM comes with a connection. Nabla, right? And so thus, psi star of TMC as well. is a holomorphic bundle with respect to uh, del bar nabla, to this new operator del bar nabla. Uh, because it's a one f it's a one form with value in some bundles. This is these are these are Riemannian manifold. So X itself is equipped with a connection, the Levi Civita connection of the Hadi, and this is come from is equipped with a connection, which is the Levi Civita connection of the target. 
So this is Levy beta connection, right? So now the fact that psi is harmonic, this is equivalent to say that phi is holomorphic. Right, so this is exactly to say that if I have a function, it is harmonic if and only if its one zero part is uh, one zero part of the DF is 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 holomorphic. So, so we have an equivalent between a harmonic object and holomorphic object, right? So let's uh, let's uh, so we're almost close now to explain this map. So. So I need some other trick now, which is have to do with a with the uh, with a symmetric spaces at t the complexified psi star of T M C. This is actually equal to the endomorphism of V. Why is it so? It turned out that what is TM? What is TM? Remember that this is a space of metric. So what is the tangent space of metric? This is at the point G. So this is a space of Hermitian metric. Hermitian matrices, matrices on E. Right. So to turn that to complexify it, I just have to add i times that. That's just complexification. You just add i to, to that. But what is i times the space of Hermitian matrix? If I take a matrix, if I take a of it, now it becomes anterior Hermitian. So that's a space of skew Hermitian. Matrices. Right? Because if I have an anti immersion, if A star is equal to minus A star, minus A, then R A of star is equal to A star, I A is equal to I A, right? So it follows that when I take the sum, these two sum, the sum of that, this is just a space of all matrices. There's a trace zero which appears, which I, which comes from the fact that you preserve the metric. I, I don't want to go into that. So that's just a space of all matrices. It's just on the morphism of it. What? No, no, that's, a, that's the endomorphism here. It's really the endomorphism. Right, right. No, no, no. no. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about SL and C in which life is simpler. So, in the end, what happens? So I'm almost done here. So what is uh, so so thus? So my uh, e so the Higgs field, the associated Higgs field. Higgs field is e equipped with del, del bar nabla. So what is nabla? So nabla is d minus one half dg, and so I mean this is I, I turned the, so this is a flat this is a flat this is a flat uh, um, this is a flat connection. It's not necessarily metric, so I turn it into a metric connection, right? So I'm not sure that there should be a one half or plus or minus something like that. So now that's a metric connection. So it's a canonical way to turn a flat metric into a metric connection, and that would be nabla. And then my phi is, as I said, the one zero part of t psi. And this is holomorphic because this is harmonic. Right, so, um, right, so I'm making... Uh, 
some operation here, which is to say, so Nabla G is, a, is actually a two tensor, but I turn it into an endomorphism using G itself. Right, so somehow, now, I've explained what is a harmonic metric, what is the associated Higgs bundle. The Higgs bundle is E itself, so I want to consider it as a, as a holomorphic bundle. So I take the del bar of Nabla, where Nabla is this natural emission connection, and you can see that the same thing as this Nabla, which is here. And uh, tip psi is just, if my Higgs field is just a one-zero part of psi. Well, actually, this object is also uh, essentially tip psi. Okay, so that's a picture. And you may be horrified to say that, to see that this is a, supposed to be the simplest the simplest arrows, and the other one requires theorem. I didn't prove anything, it's just a matter of algebraic identification. So I should stop here, and tomorrow I will explain what are these arrows, and what are happening in special cases when phi is zero, and when you fix a bundle. And, uh, and uh, right, on this, uh, well, I'm not going to give them because it's way too late already.